another year, another try. What a lovely day. Indeed. Indeed. Now it's my pleasure to introduce one of the stars of this year's Pride. He is one half of pop legend Erasure. Please welcome Mr. Andy Bell. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on the show, Andy. Thank you. Um, you're a busy boy. You've just come back from America. So tell us what's happening in America. Well, we just uh, signed to Maverick. They got us for a bargain. Right. And um, <laughs> I think they kind of think of us as um, something like the New Village People or something. <laughs> like, get, get everybody whooped up. Now, you and Vince have been together for 12 years. You're gay, Vince is straight, mm -hmm. I'm gay, my brother's straight. Mm -hmm. So Vince is in a situation where he's working with a guy who's writing from a gay perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm always having to sing straight songs. Is there ever any, I don't know, you know, antagonism about how gay it should be or whether Vince feels that his feelings are not necessarily um, being represented? I don't think it's not, it doesn't usually come from Vince. Vince is like the most supportive person and uh, he's, if, if there's any kind of, um, you know, if people come down on us, he's the first one to be there and say like, well, screw you, you know. Um, but it's kind of, it's, it's from everybody else around, you know, it's kind of like, especially as far as uh, making videos concerned and um, kind of like, I don't know, doing children's TV programmes and things like that. You know? Right. You've managed to get Vince in drag, haven't you? Yeah, he loves it. He does. <laughs> he really does. Yeah. I think because he likes women, he kind of like, he, he, he loves when he's dressed up as a woman and so he can fancy himself. <laughs> I think. I think. I don't know. Have we discussed this with him? I think. Yeah. I mean, um, he really loves it. You know. And when I mean, we were doing some um, some uh, DJing in America, and we were like dressed up in drag, and nobody knew it was us, and we were kind of, you know, playing all our favourite records and stuff, and we were just going out and like buying wigs and buying makeup and buying dresses for him, and he loves it. He loves if I take him out and and get him all dressed up right. in all the gear, you know. You need to have a particular kind of face to make that work. I mean, I've tried it once. Yeah. I looked like Cruella de Vil. It was just yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, I look pretty awful as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I, well, I don't know. You've got... Uh, I think you're prettier than I am. <laughs> you know. Now, you've always been openly gay, right? Being openly gay is a political statement in itself, isn't it? Do you think this has in any way ever um, operated against you in terms of your career? It has done. I mean, in America, it has done before, you know. Um, also, it gives you a certain amount of credibility, I think, you know. And... Um, but I think now it's kind of it, you, I'm a bit I'm a bit kind of suspicious because because you're embraced now as kind of like because because the whole gay thing is happening and like you know you, you, all of a sudden you're kind of like on the front page of a magazine or something. I always think oh no it's all over now. You know once you've been on the front page it's kind of that's it really. Do you ever think of your material as political in any way at all? There are some songs that we kind of um, before that we that we purposely wrote. I mean Hideaway was one of them and. Uh, and um, circus, um, and we decided beforehand the subject matter. But um, usually, the the, quite, the songs are quite nonsensical. But I think they're kind of um, quite celebratory as well, in a way, and uh, just about um, having fun. And uh, one thing that I love about playing live is that there's a whole, such a mixture of people there. And now, um, one one way that it's changed over the years is now you see like gay people in the audience and they're kind of like snogging and stuff and like you and you get little girls in the audience and like grown-up couples and things like that and they used to kind of like flinch so uh, you know but now they don't anymore so you don't feel that it's a gay audience that you're addressing i mean it's a really mix no it's really <coughs> it's mixed yeah now you're pretty honest about the band when i've read interviews with you and and you know if, if a single doesn't go well you say it doesn't go well mm -hmm. and <coughs> i think i don't know how you feel but pop musicians seem to be pretty um inefficient at being honest about um, the success of records or the success of albums. Yeah, it's quite strange because the whole music industry is kind of based on hype and you have to kind of like join in with it all and kind of lie per blatantly, yeah. you know, and say, well, we sold like 50 million <laughs> records in Argentina <laughs> and things like that, you know. Yeah. With some bands, and you know, we, we probably know who we're talking about when we say this, I mean, the promotion is actually the art form. Do you know mm -hmm. what I think? I mean, yeah. I think Spice Girls is a good example where the art form yeah. has actually become the promotion yeah. rather than the, the music itself. Yeah, I do love the girls, I must say. But, um, <laughs> but, but um, do you? you know, yeah, I do, yeah. But I mean, one thing, that, one thing that I don't like is how kind of young bands are used and how they're just like dropped by the side afterwards and, uh, you know, <coughs> and they have all the managers and people. They don't take care of them. They just like rip them off. And but is there any, I mean, there's no reason for that now. I mean, you know, mm. legal advice is easy. Bands know what the business is like, no matter how young they are. Do you not mm. feel there's a sense of collusion there anyway? I mean, artists collude in their own 
yeah. trivialisation. Yeah, don't they? I think it's I think it's the way that the pop industry has always has always operated anyway. But um, uh, it's something you don't realise. You know, when you're when you're young and you're on the crest of a wave, you kind of like just like think it's all fantastic. You know, I mean, uh, only after ten years, when, when you kind of like sit back and start investigating what's going on behind the scenes, yeah. then you only realise. I'm know. interested to, to see that you, you you really like the Spice Girls. What what is it that you like? Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I like them because we were we were recording the last album at the Strong Room Studios mm. in, in the East End and they were all there and this was all before they were like really famous and uh, they were coming and knocking on the door and saying oh Andy I want you to meet my boyfriend isn't he gorgeous and things like that you know <laughs> talking about your boyfriend you've been in a long-term uh, relationship with yeah. Paul isn't it mm -hmm. now um, how difficult is that to maintain given this business well, Paul is very wise, you know, he's much older than I am and he's American and, and uh, he lives in Hollywood and he's done all the kind of star thing and um, um, he doesn't put up with my bullshit, you know, and... Uh, what sort of bullshit is that? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's all right sleeping around with people, you know, which I quite like doing. Right. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, I caught a look then. <laughs> I did, I caught a look then. <laughs> but not falling in love. Right, you know, uh, that so would be, and if you felt that was ever going to be the case, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Off, okay. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you on the show, and I know that later on you're going to be doing a song for us, yeah. a piano song. <clears throat> so, everybody, give it up for Andy Bell. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. London Derry or Derry Pride? Do you, do you like Pride, Andy? Um, I quite like it. it. Was it was? Um, I liked it probably about. Nine years ago. When what, I went. what do you prefer <laughs> about it then than now? Do you think it's? Um, I don't know because it was it was by the river then. I really loved that, and, oh, um, and I remember seeing Divine on a barge. She was kind oh, of like performing yeah. on a barge coming down the river, and it was just like it was so kind of um, surreal and everything, you know. And there wasn't like loads of people there, and it was all. I mean, it still is, but like men in leather shorts and stuff, and all the kind of like it was like more like a garden fate then. The thing I find about Pride is sometimes this always feeling that you it's there and you have to go to it, even so <laughs> when you don't. Like you're going to miss it. Like New Year's, like you're saying, like New Year's it's Eve. It's like New Year's Eve, I think. You've yeah. got to go and have a good time. Yeah, you, do, you do feel obliged sometimes. Mm. You know, I mean, um, I, I, I enjoy going on the marches. Um, do you? You still do that? No. Not very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a liar. I can't <laughs> oh, but, Andy. Uh, I can't shout out, though. I can't shout, shout out. It makes me laugh. All Does the, it? Yeah, all the kind of like. Is your husband really straight and all that kind of <laughs> stuff? You know? And all the woo woo and all that.